All right. For those of you who don't know, uh, Isle Alakash Museum uh, is in Romeoville, part of the Forest Preserve District of Wheal County. Uh, our primary themes are French fur trade and, and native culture. Um, in a way, I suppose it's fitting that an education site that emphasizes history be stuck in the past, but uh, it's not good for attendance, <laughs> uh, and that's something we needed to address. Uh, we need to find better connections to our audience, and we need to find a larger audience. This is great. I can control my slides. Uh, one of the first things we did, uh, reestablished native connections. Um, cultural appropriateness is, is a huge thing. Uh, very few facilities actually do it correctly, which is something we learned from our partners. Uh, I now work with representatives from the Forest Band Potawatomi, White Earth Ojibwe, and the Machibi Nashiwich Band Potawatomi. And one of the main things we learned uh, was that not every story is ours to tell. Uh, many of you may be familiar with our rendezvous event. Uh, we, uh, after 30 some years, it had started losing touch with the public. Uh, we transformed it from a two day reenactor based event um, to a four hour rendezvous inspired event celebrating the educational opportunities the district has to offer. Um, and we did that through interactive stations that connect modern day activities to historic content. Um, there were some spaces in the museum that had an unfinished look or a confused look. So we started addressing that. First was with the mural. Uh, this tells the beginning of the fur trade story. Um, the voyagers uh, on the banks of the Displains, uh, but we wove in a new wrinkle. Uh, it's hard to see in that shot, but there's flocks of passenger pigeons flying over. So a bird that's not only part of history, it literally is history. And it's not around anymore. Uh, a second mural we did tells the end of the fur trade story. Uh, this is a dock in Quebec. Um, we had some fun with this one. Uh, this connects a dock exhibit and a hat shop exhibit. Um, it kind of completed that whole wing of the museum. Uh, it also brightened it up and we kind of poked some fun at ourselves with this. We kind of put in a lot of hidden things. Uh, and We make uh, scavenger hunts out of it now for the kids. Uh, our trader's cabin uh, is our primary teaching space. Uh, especially for school programs. Um, before, we had this wall, and it was just kind of a catch-all for program supplies. We turned it into an exhibit. Um, so not only is it a great backdrop for our school programs, for our volunteer reenactors, it also gives the interpretive naturalists on staff a, a huge arsenal to work with during programs. Um, and one thing we started doing was kind of listening to what the people wanted, what, the, what our visitors wanted. We're uh, an education site in the southwest suburbs. Um, we needed a larger focus on families. Uh, so we put in a little kids area, expanded a kids area in our library, uh, and it's become a magnet for kids. Um, this little girl right here is, likes to tell me that she's good at the native games because she's part of Jibwe. I'm like, you're probably right. Um, I've always had a problem with the word museum. Uh, I struggle with it because it, with the word museum brings preconceptions and stereotypes. And we see that almost every day at the museum with first time visitors. Um, they're afraid to touch anything. They're, they treat us like a library. They're not, supposed to, not to say anything loud. So we wanted to change the way people see us and tell some new stories. Uh, one way uh, is we were trying to tap a new audience. Uh, I use other preserves that I supervise to promote the site. Uh, the Isle of Lakash has started getting a lot of visitors now from a bird sanctuary that I supervise. Um, not a natural connection there, but it works. Um, one of the main overarching uh, stories that we're starting to tell more is how natural history and cultural history are intertwined. Uh, which is perfect for a forest preserve. Um, our cultural history was built on the natural resources 
of this area. We also wanted to start creating exhibits that were, uh, would segue to experiences. Uh, interpretation, our style of education is about educating through experiences, uh, not just reading panels. So this is our new track table. Uh, visitors can make tracks in the substrate, and then they're encouraged to go out in the preserve and find how many of these animals are still on the island. Um, we redid our logo. Um, and this is part of our branding strategy and, and actually connects to a bunch of projects that are in our, our five-year plan. Uh, but the logo is fun. It it's, uh, uses a turtle, something that's charismatic. Uh, people can easily relate to and hopefully connect to the aisle. Um, at another job, I used to commute past Isle of Cash every day and not known, I didn't know what was in that big, boring looking building. Uh, so it was only common sense that we brought in a building sign. Uh, and it really pops, it, it intrigued visitors. We get a lot of comments on it. And kind of the culmination of this uh, new philosophy, if you will, uh, is our current project. Uh, we're creating a live exhibit using the endangered Blanding's turtle. Um, which is a priority species for the Forest Preserve District. And do I get another one? I'm going to run out of coat here. Uh, but we're going to interpret them in a, a, a rather unique way. Uh, but to understand the further up. How's that? Better? Uh, but to understand the scale of this. There you go. <laughs> now I can tell it's working. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought it would be helpful for you to see what it took to get it into the museum. So it showed up that morning. We didn't know it was showing up in a 48-foot truck that wouldn't fit in our parking lot, so we had to close down half of a major road temporarily to unload the truck. Uh, our loader brought the crate to the museum's front entrance where we disassembled it to bring it, well, took it, took it down into two parts to get it through the door. And then after making a path of plywood so it wouldn't carve up our cork floors, uh, we reass reassembled it and it nests perfectly behind this faux tree which hides a steel I-beam. Um, so what we're doing now is we're gonna interpret it uh, in the context of native culture. Um, so we're connecting two very different audiences uh, in a way that few, hardly anyone, is, attempts to uh, interpret these components. Um, those of you who know native culture, North America is Turtle Island. Uh, so on the tree we're gonna hang signs, welcome to Turtle Island. Um, and we're going to pretty much just <coughs> kind of tease the audience as to, we're not gonna get into the creation stories and whatnot, but um, we have signs coming from reservations uh, that show turtle crosses, but it's, it's very different than stuff you typically see. So what's next for us? Uh, we've got five, in our five-year plan, we have a whole list of projects, kind of like this, um, that we're gonna try to change the way people see museums and tell new stories. So, all right, thank you very much.